Hey, Troy, <laughs> welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? Uh, pretty good. We're here uh, relatively early on a Sunday morning, and I uh, figured we'd talk about your uh, your character for Ruins our Ruins of Aslan camp campaign. I'm pretty excited. I, I am too. I played a PC in an adventure path to completion. We started with uh, Joe's Wrath, Wrath of the Righteous campaign and only did book one, and then we started with Curse of the Crimson Throne, and I think only got through part one of book one, so I'm excited to take a character through at least book two of Ruins yeah, of Us. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've just been GMing for so long, I haven't been able to play. We've done some disorganized play, and then before we did the podcast, we did some a lot of Pathfinder Society, so I had a bunch of little characters around, but I'm excited to be able to develop a character from first to hopefully uh, you know, double-digit levels. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited, too. I'm uh, sort of familiar with uh, the character. What, what's, uh, what met, what's distinctive about your character? Well, what I, do you I, like about him? What excites you about <laughs> your character? Everything. I think it's the most exciting character I've ever created. I've never been more excited for a character, and I think it's just because I've had so much time to think about, well, if I ever do another character, what's it going to be? Pretty much right when you said that we were going to do Aslan and we hit the Patreon goal for us to actually start producing it, I immediately started thinking of the backstory. And it was the first time that I ever went backstory first before the character. I used to just build the character and then kind of back engineer the backstory but in this case i'd had i had the hook for this character and, and i think the hook is something that won't come out for quite a while but i'm excited to kind of slow play um what happened to this guy in his life both in his military life and then after that and it's going to probably be a while until that all plays out yeah i have to say it is a really cool story and i am loath to ever give you any credit at all for anything <laughs> and, and i know that but uh but it was it's pretty badass I mean, it's 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 really it's a cool place to start, and I I can't wait to see like especially like for this campaign like it's gonna be it's gonna be neat to see how he, he grows. I think so, and it's fun for me to step out from behind the screen, but still be able to use these storytelling techniques as a player because that's something I've never really got to do before. And I think we're you and I are gonna have a lot of fun playing together, revealing these mysteries about this character to the other players. The hardest thing right out of the gate is choosing a class because where I only get to play this one PC, I want it to count. There's so many different options out there. I didn't know where to go. I really want it to be something straight out of the core rule book. I want to go with a classic class. So I went with a cleric. Um, but my goal right from the beginning was to build a cleric that's different from most builds. I didn't want him to just be a heal bot. I want him to provide party healing, but I don't want him just wasting his rounds on cure light wounds. I want him to be able to do other stuff. So I built him right now as kind of a, a bad touch cleric, um, which is a, you know, a, a route that I was debating whether I wanted to go bad touch or necromancer, and I ended up going bad touch. And uh, we'll see, we'll see how it works. This guy is a, uh, he's a retired colonel in the uh, Morthuni army. And so he has plenty of battle experience. And at first level, he can deal pretty significant damage with a pretty high to hit based on some of the feats that I've taken. So I'll be interested to see. I feel like this is a guy that can handle himself right out of the gate. So I'm interested to see how he grows and becomes more powerful um, with like divine casting as well. Well, I think one of the things that I'm uh, intrigues me the most about the character, the hook for me was a large part due to the casting. Do you want to talk about who is playing him or do you want to yeah. do you want to hold off on that? No, no, I'll let you talk about it. I I said to you originally when I was going through some really early concepts for the character, um, I, fi I think he'll be like a Christoph Waltz type guy. And then as I was building the character, I'm like, well, he has to be played by Christoph Waltz. This is There's no other guy that can play him. Um, so he's an older uh, character. He's like 55, I think. I really wanted to play an older character who's like seen the world and is now, um, you know, living out his uh, twilight years on this adventure. So you use the term bad touch cleric. Right. So, uh, so just so we don't get any complaints from the Catholic Church, right. could you explain <laughs> like what exactly you mean? By what that? don't you understand about a bad touch cleric? I think it's pretty. Uh, I mean, there's an image, a definite image in my mind. I just I want you to, to let me know. He, you, you know, a bad touch cleric is is a cleric that kind of wades into battle and uses touch attacks to try and like debuff enemies. Um, Debuff is a very broad term for what this guy is going to do based on the particular uh, domains that I've taken and the deity that I'm worshiping. I'm not de worshiping a traditional deity. And in my backstory, I see him as having found this religious part of his life later in his actual life. After his uh, military days, he became obsessed 
with this particular deity. And so the domains that I took may, are going to make it really interesting in combat to see if this guy can just run in, mess somebody up, and then get the hell out without, uh, without getting killed. When I chose Cleric, I was like, well, let's see if there's an archetype that I want to uh, play. So I was doing some research, and I saw everyone talking about Undead Lord, the Undead Lord archetype. And I got really into that. Um, so I was going to build a Necromancer. I was all about building a Necromancer. But the thing about Undead Lord is by 10th level, I would be controlling an army of skeletons and zombies. And combats would last probably 25 minutes. Just on my turn each round, we'd be like, all right, now uh, zombie number four and bloody skeleton number six get to go. Uh, so I was like, no, I'm not going to do that to Skid. And I'm not going to do that to myself. So I'm just playing a plain old cleric. Uh, and then hopefully what I, the way I've built him with feats and traits and whatnot is going to make him unique in his own right. All right. Sounds fun. Can you do the voice a little bit? Just, uh, introduce yourself. What's your uh, uh, the voice? His name is uh, Colonel Luther von Hildebrandt, <laughs> and I've been practicing my Christoph Waltz at home, uh, much to the uh, discontent of my cats. <laughs> I'm sure it's very uh, off-putting to cats. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, thank you, Troy LaValle. This has been a, a genuine pleasure. And, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get started. All right. Get out. I okay. got to go do the next I, person. I should probably go. Thank you. <laughs>